Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of EverQuest Old School. And on this episode, we were playing my cleric, and we were over in Crushbone. My cleric's level 10, pretty close to being level 11, uh, with just two more bubbles to go. And uh, we were over in the uh, throne room, basically, uh, killing these guys. And it's a really, really good experience if you can get into this group. Uh, the only downside would be that it's incredibly fast-paced. There's a lot to pull. These guys spawn incredibly fast. Uh, so you will constantly have more and more stuff to fight. So as the healer, especially if you're the only one... Sorry, <coughs> sorry about that, guys. I'm kind of still getting over a little cold there. But uh, as, the, as the healer, you're going to have your work cut out for you. You definitely don't want to get up if you don't have to. Uh, allow them to heal in between fights with their natural healing ability uh, as the damage is spread over different people. As you can see, we have two really good tanks. Uh, I'm going to have to stand up here and uh, get hit instead. Uh, we have uh, Beast here, who is, uh, as his namesake, uh, a really good beast uh, as a tank. Squibs. Uh, don't know who he is. He just joined. For all I know, he could be a shaman. Uh, it kind of looks like he might be. But uh, thanks for the group, lads and lassies. So he's doing the whole role-playing thing, or maybe he's literally from Scotland. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Or Ireland, wherever it is that they <laughs> they talk like that. Uh, got a med break. Yeah, I can't break away from the comp screen. Throne room is too juicy. Yeah, it is an incredibly good group to get into when you have... Uh, not the group, but an incredibly good room to get into when you have the group capable of fighting in here. Uh, and thankfully we do. We got uh, the right people, the right tank. Uh, this beast guy has really good armor on. You can see this this uh, set that he's wearing is probably like the level 50 stuff. Yeah, squids. Here is a shaman for sure. Uh, he just healed. I'm pretty sure that no other class uh, or nobody else will pick any other class if you're going to play a barbarian. Uh, shamans are usually a pretty uh, safe bet there. Go ahead and toss a heal here. Two healers, we should be more than fine. Let me see, is he a higher level than I am? I uh, know he's dark blue, so he's a little bit lower than me. But with two of us, we should do uh, incredibly well here. And remember, you're going to be fighting a lot of legionnaires. You're also be fighting a lot of uh, emissaries. Uh, centurions are here. Yeah, he's got me. Um, so you get a lot of shoulder pads, a lot of legionnaire shoulder pads. Which, at this level, beyond level 10, you really don't want to turn the belts in anymore. Uh, my suggestion would be to get uh, platinum from them so that you sell them to other players so that you can go ahead and uh, start saving up for your next level spells because they do get really, really, really expensive. <laughs> he is just a, a really good tank with that armor. Uh, granted, he is tweaked beyond belief, but uh, hey, it's good to have somebody like that. Definitely helps the healer, definitely helps the group. And uh, it definitely proves his namesake as a beast, as I said before, which everybody else is slowly figuring it out. But uh, I was here with my paladin earlier, and I did uh, probably about four or five uh, videos with that. Hold on one second, guys. <coughs> I apologize there. That was that cough that just uh, comes up every so often. Troll bad man. Yeah. <laughs> Trolls are usually really, really good tanks. Trolls and ogres will usually be the best tanks out there. Uh, because I think they start with more strength or more stamina. I don't remember which one. I think it's both, probably. Uh, plus, he's a warrior to boot, uh, which will give you uh, that extra little advantage that other classes don't necessarily have. Like, a paladin is a good class as a tank for different reasons. He can heal, he can... He can buff up, so that's nice to have as an extra little safety boot. Uh, Shadow Knights can do Fatigue Death. They can slow the target down with their Snare, uh, their Dooming Darkness, which is nice. And then a Warrior doesn't have any of those. It doesn't have the, the buffs. It doesn't have the heals. It doesn't have the Fatigue Death. It literally only has its ability to taunt and take the hits. So it gives them more of that than it does anything else. So if you want the pure uh, race, the pure class, uh, warrior is as pure as you can get for tank, whereas clerics are as pure as you can get for healers. And I've mentioned this before, and I'm kind of biased because I'm playing a cleric, and I've always played clerics. But druids have some really good direct damage spells. They also have some decent dots as well. Sh uh, shamans get a really good uh, few dots there. They also get an extra uh, damage from their pet. They get a little uh, doggy, a little 
little companion to join them. They also get some amazing buffs, which is what they usually do when they join a, a raid or a group, uh, is their buffs are just all around amazing. And they get a whole bunch of them, you know, pretty much everything under the sun. Like, clerics can give you buffs for hit points and AC. That's pretty much it. Shamans will give you a hit point, or not hit points, but give you buffs for pretty much everything else. You know, your strength, your stamina, your agility, uh, increase your attack speed, increase your run speed, so everything else that you can possibly think of. Uh, and they have a few direct damage spells that are okay. Now, they do heal adequately enough as it is, but they're not going to, in my opinion, and everybody has a different opinion on it, in my opinion, if you put a healer, or like a cleric, and a shaman head to head and see which one can heal better, the cleric, by the time he gets complete heal, is going to out heal all of them. Because as far as I remember, clerics are the only ones who get that spell. The moment they get that spell, nobody else can compete. Because a complete heal, whereas later on expansions, doesn't completely heal the people, uh, at this time it does. No matter what the health of the tank is, it's not going to exceed what the capability of that spell is. So if you can get the, the tank who has an enormous amount of hit points and time the spell right, where it takes on him when he has two hit points left or one hit point left, and, you know, you got the full effect out of that spell. And by the time that tank uh, manages to whittle his life back down, chances are you'll be back to full, or full power again, is the way it's supposed to work. So you're just a healing machine when you get that. I'll be back later. So who's leaving? Got to bounce, guys. Okay. So that was our other healer taking off, our other druid that we had. I'll be back later. Yeah. Can someone stop by with a bit of summon water below or trainer camp practicing a song here for skill and runner out? And so, yeah, it might be something somebody can do for you, but chances are not really. Let me look at my inventory. I think I have food on this guy. I think I went and actually bought some. Oh yeah, I bought food and water. Because I can summon it, but that's something you have to do every time you log on. Because if you go Link Dead, uh, you'll need new uh, food and water. Because summon stuff is uh, temporary, as in if you log off or Link Dead, it disappears. There are a few items like that as well that you can get. Uh, you know, stuff like mages are able to summon weapons. So they can give to their pets, and they can give it to necro pets as well, but necros don't get that ability to summon items. Uh, they literally have to use ones they find off of corpses and stuff like that. And uh, those items will go link or will disappear as well. And you can use those items too, they can give them to other players and you can use it. Uh, which has been known to happen on uh, corpse retrieval runs. If you're trying to get your corpse back and things of that sort, uh, you're going back you know, naked with nothing on. Uh, you can use those weapons as just, uh, you know, that much more damage. And granted, they're not going to be anywhere close to what you were using before, but they're still halfway decent because that spell uh, gets upgrades to it as you progress through the game uh, to make it useful. Because if you're using, like, a level 4 spell that gave you, like, 3 or 4 damage, uh, it'd probably be better off just letting your pet use his fist than it would be using, uh, you know, a weapon that pathetic, you know? So it does get better. And uh, it does have its uses. Not the greatest in the world, but it does have them. It's something you can play around with. Every spell in the game has a trainer is camp, second person, tried kill, stealing in less than five minutes. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people go on tonight complaining about that kind of stuff. Uh, it's a low-level zone, so people are still learning. So I wouldn't give people too hard of a time. I know I did a video way back, uh, probably about two weeks ago, about uh, how some guy was pulling some of our pulls and we couldn't figure our kills and couldn't figure out what he was doing. Well, apparently he was lost and he was he was hoping that we would actually kill it for him and that's why he was standing in front of us uh, because he was just looking around. He was new to the zone. He was checking it out and seeing if anybody wanted a group and, and things of that sort. And he just happened to, to pull these things and it kind of looked like he was stealing them and he was able to take them down and kill it all and my group was like, don't heal them, don't do any of this. And I'm like, come on, you know, seriously, I'm not going to be that guy. If somebody's about to die, I'm going to heal them if I can. As long as it's not going to affect my group in any way. You know, if, if my group is dying, I'm going to heal them first, obviously. They're my group, but if I'm full power and my group's not even in a fight and he's killing right there in front of us and we don't know why yet, we haven't established that he's being a jerk, uh, I'm not going to be that. I'm going to heal him. And it ended up, uh, you back... 
So it ended up being that uh, he was actually lost. So, you know, don't just assume the worst out of people because when you do and you come at them with an attitude, well, their chances are are going to come back defensive with an attitude as well. And then you start this huge fight that didn't need to be. And in the end, we actually became friends with that guy. He was you know, just a really nice guy uh, and new to the game. And he, you know, really was happy that, you know, I threw buffs on him and I healed him. And he was, like, ecstatic that people were that nice. And I'm like, yeah, it just takes somebody being nice. If somebody's being rude to you, go above and beyond to be nice to them. And I guarantee you their, their mood will change. Maybe not for you. Maybe not for the next customer. But it will hit them all of a sudden be like, wow you know and they, their mood will switch around it's it's amazing how this world really is determined uh and affected by each and every one of us you you're a jerk to some guy in line and he goes off and be a jerk to somebody else because you were a jerk to him and it just snowballs and the same thing can be said for being nice you know and so in this server everybody goes above and beyond to be nice so far and that's that's the feel that's really rubbed off on everybody and it's just amazing it's an amazing feel when that happens uh, leech call, boot him, he's too low anyways. What, squibs? So he joined and then went, went AFK? Yeah, that sucks. Let's see, what did he say? Did he ever say anything at all? I guess he didn't. Be right back while I med, slowing this one. I guess he was meditating and he had to go AFK. Ah, it sucks that they booted him. I mean, he probably was, you know, going to come back. He probably will come back and be like, what happened? Well, we booted you because we're too stingy on the, the experience. I mean, it's not like we had somebody to take his place. If we had somebody to take his place, I would agree. Uh, you know, if he hadn't come back in like 10 minutes, go ahead and boot him and, and put somebody else in. But he was only gone for a few minutes, so... And it really comes down to who, what kind of personality you have. Granted, if you had just joined a group, I would suggest not going AFK right away. That's, that's kind of poor taste and may give people a, a poor opinion of you. But hey, real life things happen. <laughs> I've waited like four hours to get into a group before. Finally get into the group, in the group for like five minutes. And then something happens and I literally have to leave. You know, like my brother would call and be like, hey, my car broke down, can you give me a ride? Well, I'm not going to say, no, sorry, I'm in the middle of a group, bye. You know, I'm going to be like, yeah, you know, you're stuck on the side of the road with family, that's what you do, right? Uh, so, you know, it just looks bad, but sometimes you can't help it. So I don't judge other people, I try not to anyways. This guy has like enormous amounts of hit points. There we go, everybody's full life. Would be better if we had another DPS here, we kind of need it, because these guys can tank them, but they can't really deal it out. Like, my Necro would do really well here. But I don't want to bring them here, because I like having uh, different zones to show you guys. Uh, if you have a favorite zone out there that you want to see again, let me know. I'll be happy to, to hit it up. Uh, I also do EverQuest 2 Let's Plays, so if you guys want to see a comparative look at the different zones, I know I've done Butcher Block and EverQuest 2, I've also done Frostfang C, uh, but I haven't really touched any of the other ones yet. So if you guys want to see what Crushbone looks like in, in EverQuest uh, 2 or something like that, I'll definitely do that. And you can compare the graphics and, and the different take on the creatures and things of that sort. So I love it how that guy just went right for me even though I hadn't done anything yet. Literally hadn't healed, hadn't, hadn't moved. The only thing he liked about me was that I'm sitting down and then I'm a cleric. Druid is a melee druid. Watch out. I'll join 12 druid. Okay, so he's not a healer, is what they're saying. Uh, a 20% power. And I'm getting hit by an oracle. Okay. This might be bad. You guys need to kill some of this stuff. Let me sit back down. Stupid oracle. Kill that punk already. Okay, Squids is back. Here comes the Druid. Along with some more mobs. Oh, yeah, that's great. Just bring him in. 
Don't give any warning or anything. Out of power. This is not gonna end well. Hopefully I can do a little bit of meditation. Uh, Beast can tank like nobody else. 14 mage, too high. Not for us. That'd be perfect. A mage would be perfect. I mean, we get a caster and another tank. 14 cleric. Could get the other cleric too. That would be good. Let me see if I can heal Beast. Maybe one heal. Out of power again. Try to back up a little, let them share the wealth. And he better not die. 10% life, 1%. Come on. <laughs> Do not get hit. Stay in the back. Let Baze and Toilock hit it. 4%. Come on. Yeah, no, I still can't do it. <laughs> Just trying to heal him with the heal, but I hate having him at 5% because all it would take was for something to get aggro on him. He's dead. Whereas if I can just toss another little heal, give him that little bit of bonus, especially with all these people trying to des to get in here. I would say get the cleric and the druid, but hey, we got a couple people here already, and we got the pet. So yeah, get the get that guy in here. Let's see what are they doing? Is who's the leader, anyways? I don't know. Nobody's saying anything. Okay, we got uh, the druid. And now we need to get the mage. Get the mage, get the mage. What are you guys waiting for? about that with the warriors is they go berserk when they're below I believe it's 25% or 30% can I get strength buff hello and do uh, forward slash shift up which will allow you to say the same thing again you can go through pretty much everything you've said so if you were talking to somebody and you forgot how to spell their name and it's been a while since you talked to them uh, but it's been a while since you said anything as well you can scroll back up, see the conversation, uh, and see how you spell their name again. You can even backspace the conversation without having to spell their name out all over again. Uh, because there's sometimes people will have like a lot of I's and L's next to each other. It's the worst in this game because the text is so small as it is. But when you have a lot of I's and L's next to it, you have a hard time figuring out which one is an I and which one is an L because the uppercase I looks a lot like the lowercase L. So it's very, very difficult to tell the difference sometimes. And of course I get the oracle on me again. No uh, more healing. I'm out of power. Look at my equipment. I actually don't really have anything special on this guy. I have nothing on this guy that adds wisdom. This is just uh, regular stuff I got for turning in the Crushbone Belt quest. Uh, the armor-wise, anyways, and my weapon. Uh, I think it's just a crappy weapon. Yeah, it's poor damage, 28 delay. I had nothing whatsoever to it. But I never attack with my weapon, so it's not that big of a deal. Let's see. I guess I'll heal Beast up a little bit. That's a lot of red stuff, whatever that is. That must be the mage. I didn't build up a little bit beneath the power leveled. But he just joined and he leveled. Usually if you are about to level when you're when you're looking for a group, you want to put uh, I've seen people do it several different ways. Level 12, almost 13 looking for group, level 12.8 looking for group. And that just lets them know because sometimes you will be right on the edge of what somebody that's a low level in the group can get experience from. And if two you know, kills down the road, you level up, now they can't get experience, 
they may decide, well, okay, but they don't want you in there. Or maybe the reverse. You may be right there on the lower end of what's acceptable. You know, they really need a cleric and you're, you're level 23 and 24 would be the acceptable. But if they know that you're almost there, sometimes the higher level will leave the group for a few kills, let you join, get some experience, get that level, and then rejoin again because they need that cleric to, to really continue. So it's a good idea to let people know if you're right there on the limit. If you're two or three bubbles away, don't bother. But if you're, you know, four or five percent away, uh, you definitely want to let people know just in case. One more level for so, can't wait. Hoping the prophet spawns. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and heal up Beast while we wait. Uh, we usually will let his uh, life go up automatically, but he has so much of it. And I don't want to wait till the fight starts that I have to heal him up and risk getting aggro and things of that sort. So I'm going to heal him up to about 80, 95% maybe. Uh, probably until my power is gone. <laughs> Because he does just uh, he just an enormous amounts of damage uh, that he can take. The mage still upstairs, uh, probably. No, I'm right here. <laughs> yeah, well, let's let's see. What do they want to sell? Level twelve enchanted. That guy's still trying to sell that twelve platinum now. I think it went down in price. 14 cleric you know by the I know it's hard for a cleric uh, to find a group in unrest sometimes uh, before level 15 but by the time you get to level 14 it sucks I know but you probably want to head over there because you might be a little too high for people over here uh, granted he could join our group here in the throne room but you know the throne room is either always camped or nobody's in it at all and then putting together a group can sometimes be kind of difficult uh, would we probably let you loot the p uh, piece, I guess. What's rotation? Alphabetical, so beast next. Does anyone have any use for a level 11 mage? Nope, not right now. If you had asked a little while ago, I would have said come join a group over here, but... Nice, just hit me. These guys don't necessarily have to be full life all the time. I know at, at low levels, that's what you get used to doing. It. And I mentioned this, uh, I think, once or twice before, that at higher levels, your heal spells will be so powerful that you won't want to waste the, the mana or the power on healing them, uh, especially if they're not the main tank. If they're like a caster or something like that, and they're at 85%, really not worth it to throw a heal on them because chances are they won't take a hit again for a long time and their health will go up slowly and regenerate especially if you have a druid in the group giving you chloroplast or something along those lines and so uh, you don't really want to waste the power but it can be an annoyance for some people to to look at their life somewhat down and be like oh I really 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 uh, hate that you know they should be all full power all the time or full life all the time um, you know you gotta break that habit because it's just not gonna happen then again, uh, if you are in a group that's just so easy and you're full power uh, and you're waiting for the next pull, go ahead and heal them. I mean, you've got anything to lose in your life, your power's going to go back up before that pull's over with anyway, so uh, just to, definitely something to be aware of. At, at some point in the game, you're going to have to just accept the fact that, you know, you're not going to have everybody full life. Like right now, we have two tanks, so each one takes a little bit of the hits, and Beast takes the most damage because he's taken the, the taunt, the, the majority of the fight. And Tolok takes damage a lot easier because he just doesn't have the uh, the armor that the, the Beast has. And so, uh, you know, it kind of looks like they're taking even amount of damage. Well, they're not really. Beast is taking the brunt of it. Uh, he just doesn't take damage as well. Or as easy, I should say, as the other guy. And so, therefore, I'm kind of constantly having to heal both. But if I have to pick which one to survive the fight... Uh, that guy was going to hit me, too. If I have to pick somebody to survive the fight, somebody to heal, it's probably going to be Beast in this situation because I know Beast will make the most use out of my spell. If I heal him for 500 points of damage or 500 points of he uh, health, I know that he'll take those 500 points of health and use them 
more than anybody else, more than uh, Tolok or anybody else, and, and maybe even survive the fight, whereas Tolok would take maybe two hits and then be through that 500 points. So. Toss it here on Bays. Here's our resident uh, bard singing and playing for us all night tonight. And he's going through my power like nobody's business. Three heals would have done an enormous amount for uh, Beast. Bays, gone. The moment I heal him, gone. So You have to make that decision constantly. Do I heal the caster even though it's going to go through it? Yes and no. You want to heal him enough to where he doesn't die, but he doesn't need to be full life during the fight or even after the fight's over. You know, you can leave him at 5% or 10%. Scary because one hit will kill him, uh, but if it's a choice between the tank or the caster, I'm going to choose the tank because when he's dead, everybody dies. Same thing with the healer. If the healer dies, whether he's the druid or sh uh, shaman or, or cleric or whatever the case is, if all you have is one healer uh, and you have multiple creatures hitting, uh, you're not going to survive the fight. The tank's not going to be able to survive on its own. Even though uh, after two or three hours of fighting in a, in a zone, he feels like he's going to. You know, you feel invulnerable when you're in a group with a, a healer because you just go off constantly, pull, come back constantly, you're at full life or close to it, and you're like, man, I am, I am good. I'm not taking any damage. We're doing a great job. And in reality, it's really the healer who's, who's keeping you up. Uh, and it's the other classes in the group who are doing the damage. Because, you know, a warrior is not going to do more damage than a necro or a wizard or a shaman or pretty much anybody else, you know? Even a, even a druid could out-damage him if he wants to. There's all my power. I don't think anyone is upstairs. So, Crush Bone Belt, uh, I think Dim Crush would obliterate us, though. Yeah, probably, and I would need to be full power, and that's almost an impossibility down here because the creatures spawn so quickly. And so unless we got like clarity or something along those lines, uh, probably not a good idea to to try that guy just yet. We had a few people that were a little higher level or maybe better gear on. Uh, we could do that. Like if you look at the bard right there, he's a uh, base. Uh, you can see the bluish armor that he has on. That's plain armor. That's going to be like the best armor you can get for quite a long time. Uh, you can. There's always get better pieces, especially as new expansions come out. There's going to be better pieces, but for the longest of time, plain armor was the best, and it was the most, uh, you know, well known. Like you could look at it and be like, oh, okay, you got you got plain armor, you're good, you can come in. You know, it didn't really matter if you had uh, sucky jewelry and all that other stuff. If they they're just looking at you first glance, uh, as far as your your armor goes. So a lot of people would actually invest in their armor, noticeable pieces, to make themselves look more. Uh, outfitted than they really are just so they can get into groups because a lot of groups unfortunately would judge you that way they weren't just worried about it. at low levels they just want that class they want that race uh, you know we want a, a cleric you know we don't really care how outfitted you are but at higher levels when the rooms start becoming far more difficult uh, they do care they want to know you know like in EverQuest 2 I remember for raids uh, they wouldn't ask you know what kind of gear you had they would literally ask uh, what were your stats they wanted to know, they wanted you to put it in your bio, that your attack was this and your healing was this. What were your critical chance of healing? Uh, which is something they added in EverQuest 2 they didn't have in this one. Which was, instead of a critical hit, which is what you could get in this one, when you hear like, somebody's bones crunch, uh, you could get a critical heal, which was the exact opposite or different side for a healer. Uh, so when you healed, instead of doing a thousand points of, of health like you would normally do for that spell, because that's what the spell does, uh, occasionally you would get a critical heal, which would add, you know, an extra 3,000 heal points to that health, uh, you know, to that spell. Which you would think would be like, oh, that's kind of worthless. Like, why would I want that? You know, if I know that it only does 1,000, then I'm going to use it when I need 1,000. Well, in situations like this where the guy's life is at 64%, I need to heal him like four or five times. Uh, I could heal him once at the very beginning and poof, his entire life is full life because I got a critical heal. That saves me the extra two heals that I would normally toss on him. So that's kind of cool. It does uh, come in handy. And it would be nice if they like integrated that into EverQuest 1, which they did later on, but by then it had already become a, a different game than what I was accustomed to. So Bardkin two-handed is uh, it's a quest item. Screaming Mace. Uh, that's nice. Dwarven two-handed axe. 
Uh, 14 damage, 43 delay, and 6.5 on the weight is something to be very, very aware of is how much it's going to weigh on you. Uh, screaming maze. Well, is Demiro then fire? Okay, thank you. That guy can't jump worth nothing. White mine can't jump. I'll pass on loot. Passing them along. Okay, that's that's better. I love it when they do that. When they, when one person loots it and gives it to the people who need it. That way, I don't have to get up. I don't waste time uh, meditating uh, or not meditating when I should be, you know, sitting down and, and getting more power. And I go ahead and just give uh, a percentage of my power. You know, let them know what it's at because in this game you can't see that. In EverQuest 2, you can see how much power everybody has. In this one, you kind of have to ask, uh, you know, mana check or uh, camp check, things of that sort, to see... Man, these guys just love me. Just sitting here minding my own business. They do not like that. But yeah, they do a, a mana check to find out where you're at. But instead of having to uh, do that, instead of having to have them ask you, just every so often when you know that they're waiting, like if, they, if the tank doesn't immediately run out of the room, then chances are there's a, a a good reason for it. either nothing's up and he's being lazy and he doesn't want to keep running around looking for stuff or there's a there's a room that he wants to pull for whatever reason maybe it's in his path of of pulling other stuff and everything's spawned and he knows there's going to be probably two or three guys coming and he's going to get ready to ask you you know what your power is or he's giving you a minute to med because it's been a big battle and he doesn't know you know chances are your power has been drained quite a bit uh he grabbed one, didn't he? So I'm at 80% or close to it. Uh, you don't ever want to overestimate what your power is at. See, now I'm at 80%, so... I think he gave it to them. Okay, yeah, he gave it to me. Only thing he wants is the spell book. I don't know what books they're talking about, but... It sounds like there's some pretty sweet items in this room, so... Hopefully we'll get to see what some of them are they, if they drop, and I'll show you what the stats are. And uh, you guys can decide for yourself whether this room is something you definitely want to check out. Because uh, you don't always have to come here. You can go to a lot of different other zones besides that Crushbone. It just, Crushbone has a bonus experience for creatures that are killed here. I think it's like 180% more than what you were getting before, 160% or something like that. And so it's dramatically faster to level here. And so a lot of people who have higher levels will come here with their tweaked out characters uh, because you know they've done it before they they know how to play their class they probably know how to play the class they're starting with fairly well because they've watched other people play it and they've asked questions and and things of that sort but you're gonna even in even even a zone like this where you're gonna level faster you're still gonna level slow enough that you can learn your class as a pooler and you're gonna have to play that guy a lot and you're gonna have to play them in each zone. Like every time you go to a new zone as a pooler, you're you're basically starting at scratch again. You know certain, you know things that will help you out. Like creatures can't cast spells on you if they can't see you. So there are some rules. If you're pulling a creature who's a caster down a long hallway, and your your room is right at the end of that hallway, don't just stand there and let them cast on you the whole way. Go into that room and go to the right side. Block yourself so they can't see. They will literally run into the room, then start casting, and that's when everybody can jump on them and start beating the crap out of them and stuff like that. So, little tips like that you'll be able to take on to the next zone, but every zone has its unique ability to pull, and you have to learn how to heal in every zone as well, uh, because you know, some creatures will cast different dots on, on, on people, and you need to learn what that is. You also need to learn what resist to put up on people in the beginning. You'll have to, to make sure you... Every group is going to be different as well. Every tank takes damage differently depending on their armor, their level, their race, their class, uh, things of that sort. So when you finally do get complete heal, man, that, that's one of those things that when you first join a group and you're learning the, the tank, complete heal is a hard thing to get right because it takes 10 seconds to cast. So if you cast it too late, they die. You cast it too early, well, it doesn't really do anything bad, but you wasted power, whereas that power could have been saved. So if you're right there on the limit of, you know, 
not having enough power to survive the fights because the fights are so hard, then you don't really want to waste it. Hold on a second. Why oh, a mage is getting hit? He is a pet. Usually his pet will take it for him. The moment I heal him, his life goes back down again. Our healer got hit as well, so I'll go ahead and toss him a heal and sit back down. Give me your pad so I can take off to <laughs> Beast again. Base for Alpha. I don't know my Alpha. When I hit 13, I will be taking off. People still buy these? I turn them in. Yeah, people buy everything in this game. You know, even the little trash stuff that you think is worth this. I mean, rusty weapons. Everybody's like, uh, who wants that? Well, blacksmithers uh, is a good way to level that up. Your blacksmithing skill, your ability to do that. You get sharpening stones that I believe cost like one copper a piece. You go in there and sharpen them up. You level up a little bit. And then you can go sell that to a vendor for a higher price. So you actually make more money in the long run. May I take these bracers? Uh, you know, these this little low level stuff in here. Well that stuff does sell for money. I even mentioned earlier that if you're really low level and you're having a hard time uh, affording your spells and you can't find groups at the moment because everything's camped and you're waiting in line to, uh, or in query to, to get into a group in this zone, uh, to come over here into the throne room and ask uh, the leader or the group if they mind if you uh, clean up the, the excess stuff. And usually, like the last group we had, uh, after about 20-30 minutes everybody's backpack is full of belts and and shoulder pads and things of that sort and some people will make a run to the bank if the group's doing really really well but nobody will loot the the rest of the stuff the rusty weapons the shoulder pads that are just regular cloth and and things of that sort so you can come in here and say can i get that stuff and they'd be like yeah clear up the corpses it makes it better for us and just go crazy with it right and you can come in here and get all of that and you know you're not going to make platinum off of it but you will make uh, you know, gold here and there from the items, uh, the weapons, you get like three or four gold a piece, so eventually I guess we may make a few platinum. But that will help you make uh, a little bit of money for your spells. You will have to run back to the town every so often and sell, uh, which is the part that uh, most people don't want to leave a group to do. Nice. Level 11. Ding. Level 11. <laughs> In the second one, when you level, this big aura comes down and it shows everybody that you level and they can hear it and they know. And this one, if you want the, basically you only do it if you want the attention to let them know that you, you got another level. I usually only do it so that I'll let them know that I can heal them better down. Because as a level 11, I have a little bit more power than what I had before. Every level you'll get more hit points and you'll get more power. Uh, your other stats usually won't go up uh, that much, if anything at all. But as you can see now, I have 309 mana, where I think I had 300 earlier. So I got an extra 9. Yeah, it's not too shabby. It is. The experience here is great. But remember, if you die right now, you'll lose your level and go back down to level 10. Way better than soloing centurions and slaves, yeah. Which is what I think the druid was doing, apparently. So I got full power now. I might actually be able to throw some buffs on these people uh, if we can... If we don't go through all my health or my power here healing up. Wow, he has a lot of hit points. He's taking a good amount of hits. This may actually drain my power. Which is why I mentioned before, you want to stay at full power as much as possible. Because you just never know when a fight like this is coming. Especially at this low level where you can just go through your power so easy. Uh, you know, at higher levels... Especially when you get that complete heal. I know I talk about it all the time, but that thing is just amazing. That That's a game changer when you get that. For a healer, you get your complete heal, and all of a sudden you go from being close to out of power all the time to being full power all the time. Once you learn how to use that effectively. Okay, sit down. Now that I got, wait, like 25% on my power? 23. Yeah, hit me. I'm not doing anything to you. Caster. Uh, yeah, you gotta kill those casters. Gotta. Baze needs a little bit of healing. Need a little bit of love. Here comes some. And I'll let him rest. 
yeah, and heal up the rest that way. I mean, he is a bard, so he can throw on his heal song if he really, really wants to. Uh, let's see. A woolly mammoth hit me at hard, so yeah, they are big, and they hit hard. I think I need more hit points, but hey, I'm a wizard. At 16, you could solo heal here. Yeah, you probably could. If you had the right armor. 20 could break camp and solo, so... Breaking camp is something we haven't really gotten into with uh, my cleric because, you know, you're not going to do that as a cleric. But breaking camp usually requires you to be a higher level than what it would require uh, keeping it clear once it is broken. Uh, breaking camp just refers to the fact that these creatures spawn in certain spaces, certain, certain uh, exact spots every single time. And if nobody has killed these guys in a while, the whole room will respawn. Well, that may mean that if you're not good at pooling or if the room's just not capable of being pulled that way, you will have to take on all of those mobs at once. So whereas you could take on each one of those mobs separately, single, one by one, and not have a problem, taking on each one of them at the exact same time may be way too much for you. Uh, I can do about two Legos at a time at the moment. Uh, I can't solo a Lego. <laughs> so... The mage can do two Legos, whereas the druid can't can't even do one. Uh, let's see. I need to get J boots. Yeah, J boots would be an awesome camp. I can't wait to do that one. Solby <laughs> for Jet, the journeyman. Oh no, he's talking about journeyman boots. Those are the ones that give you so. I can do about two. Okay, sixteen pet has tons more HP. Jet would have been better. His pet regen nerfed here. 16, you should have soloed Yard Trash and Unrest. Good to know. Yeah, Yard Trash and Unrest is crazy, but that would be perfect for a mage. There's just a lot of them. you got to remember that in that zone, it's train central. So there's a lot of roamers. This usually adds to trains. And there's just... Uh, it's easy access to the zone entrance. Uh, some zones, you got to go really far and go down into stairs or, or ladders or jump into water to get to your camps. So not exactly an option to run to the zone when something bad happens. It will take you like 20 minutes to get there and you're going to get like four feet down the hall before you run into like 60 other guys and you're dead. So remember though, if you are going to die, to pick the space where you're going to die based off of how hard it will be to get your body back. If you're sitting in a room that you know is going to respawn, then you are you may decide to go out of that room and into the hallway where nothing is spawning. No, there may be a room or two, but there's no five or six guys in there, and die in the hallway. That way when you come back, you don't have to clear the room. You can just drag your corpse, res yourself, uh, and then you're ready to go. Then you can break the room. So keep that in mind. Not always an option, but if it is, try to die in a spot that will make it uh, the best possible way for you to get back to it. Which sometimes is just simply running from where you're camped and dying in a corner in a spot uh, that's like you know incredibly easy to get to because uh, all you got to do is be able to target your corpse and then you can pull it to you so that could mean standing on a ledge pulling your corpse all the way up it means you don't have to jump all the way down so simply because you can't get up the ladder or maybe if you can get up halfway the ladder before you die sometimes your corpse will literally stay there uh, on that spot of the ladder where you died sometimes it will fall all the way back down uh, sometimes it will dance around on the ladder. I mean, there's a lot of different little bugs and issues with the game, but considering how massive it is, it's amazing that they got as much as they did right. Uh, let's see. Too many people in them zones. Why I chose this continent? What are they talking about? Uh, 16 can solo came in. So they're talking about uh, over there in the Oasis. Oasis sucks, though. I like Oasis. True Bread Unrest probably as camped as Crushbone. I feel if I'm... Relearning this whole game, group and unrest beats soloing Oasis. Yeah, it's gonna any group is gonna beat soloing anywhere, but barbarians are a funny group. They run around with nothing on and club hit something, die, and then they come back and do it again. I'm excited about seeing unrest again. So am I. They changed so many zones. Yeah, indeed. Uh, I started it recently again. Uh, capped at 100 before they did new expec. Yeah, it's. It's crazy. I want to see some of the old zones that I that I really really loved, uh, like Unrest, Unrest, Crushbone. I'm in right now. I loved uh, Lower Guck. That's gonna be an awesome. I'm gonna spend so much time there, guys. You guys are gonna hate 
seeing unrest, but I love that zone. I also love Solus B, and the great thing about those two zones is they're equal levels. So from like level 40s to like 50s, you can go to both of them. And I love both zones, and I'm definitely going to be going to both zones. So I'll try to make sure I alternate uh, with different characters in different places uh, and try both of them out. But we're going to go those to those zones, guys, and you're going to be sick of seeing them by the time I'm done. But I never get sick of those zones. So. Unfortunately, you guys can look forward to that. And of course, you can always skip episodes if you really, really get tired of it. But they're just great XP, great loot, great groups. Uh, and if I uh, take my Paladin over there, I'm going to see how well he works out as a pooler. He may not do nearly as well as my Shadow Knight, but we'll see. Uh, let's see. I never got that high. Beast next. Uh, okay, Beast is going to get the next loot. Let's see, I'm doing pretty good. I could probably buff up some of these other guys. Usually you want to buff up yourself first, and it may seem kind of greedy to do that, but the reason you're doing that is as a timer. So when they wear away on you, they're wearing away on the other people as well. So it's a good way to do it if you don't have a, a clock on. And some of these, these buffs are different timers on them altogether because they're lower levels or higher levels, whatever the case may be. Uh, so they're not equal equal uh, you know clock you can't look at it and be like okay all my buffs are gonna wear off in 10 minutes uh, you know some of them maybe 12 minutes and another one's maybe 12 minutes and 15 seconds it's, it's weird so uh, staff I gotta get going see you on rest yeah we'll have to see some of these people again some of these people have leveled so quickly that I've grouped with them when they were lower level and now they're they're really really high so that kind of sucks that I'll have to wait until they get to max level before I see them again but I'm not going through as fast as most people are I play uh, probably about four or five hours at a time and I do you know five or six of these videos and then I do my other games for the rest of the week because I'm doing uh, about five or six games uh, at one time and I still go to work during the day so it takes a little while on that what racers of battle okay so I think we're gonna go ahead and end the episode here guys if you like these episodes please hit the like button subscribe definitely leave comments down below love to hear back from you guys on, on what you have fond memories of and things of that sort and again guys I want to thank you for watching